Rakan is a high skill cap support champion that relies on incredible mobility to provide huge bursts of crowd control and shields for his team. When you think about the best Rakan players in the world, some names come to mind. People like Stunt, a Korean challenger player now in NA playing as a sub for 100 Thieves in the LCS. And it's impossible to mention Rakan without talking about Baolan, the support for LPL's Invictus Gaming. Yes, the guy the skin is based on. Baolan has shown time and time again how incredible Rakan can be in the hands of somebody with incredible mechanics and game sense, using that to claim the world championship in 2018 over Fnatic. Baolan has even used the Charmer in 2019's mid-season Invitational to great effect over G2 Esports. Though these are some amazing Rakan players, they don't stack up to the stats brought to the table by Petit Banan, a challenger EUS player who is considered the best Rakan in the world. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Twigger, that of course is Lola, and we are back with another League of Legends video featuring the number one Rakan in the world, which is very, very exciting to say because he's one of my favorite champions to play. But we are going to be focusing on this player, Petit Banan, who is an EU West Rakan player who is considered the number one Rakan in the world and definitely has the stats to back that up. Um, a challenger flex player and a master tier solo ranked player, but with 1.9 kills. 3.9 deaths and 13.8 assists definitely has some pretty impressive stats of course playing support you would expect to have a higher death ratio than your uh, kill ratio but the 13.8 assists per game on average is incredible and it's even more incredible that this player has a 77.4 percent win rating over 115 games which is pretty damn nuts when you think about how many games is and how many you have to win in order to achieve that sort of ratio so very very excited to see what makes this this player's Rakan so much better than everybody else's, let's say mine, which is very, very crappy to be honest, especially in comparison to somebody who's going to be playing him as well as Petit Banan. Um, but in regards to the runes that this player is currently running, going for very standard things here, Guardian um, in the Resolve tree, Demolish, Bone Plating, and Revitalize, and then in the Inspiration tree, getting that Biscuit Delivery System going, and also Cosmic Insight for that additional CDR, and in his Runic stats, we've got additional CDR, and then two additional Magic Resist rune stats to help out with the bot lane. Um, in terms of who we've got in this game, up in the top lane, we have got a Hecarim versus a Silas, we've got Lee Sin versus versus Elise in the jungle. We've got Ari versus Echo in the mid lane. And then we've got Sivir, Rakan versus Kaisa, Soraka. So definitely some interesting lanes. A lot of um, ability, I would say, for uh, any lane to really pop off um, because you got a lot of really heavy damage dealing champions in this game, not any real squishy, sorry, tanky, beefy tanks or anything like that. Everybody has the chance to pop off in this game. Um, but a couple little things that I would like to mention is that up in the top lane, we've got some pretty interesting people here. Whirly B from the LEC, um, from the LEC um, Europe's basically LCS. Um, is in this game playing on that Hecarim. He's actually a player from SK Gaming and has a lot of experience on the professional stage. He's, um, I, I believe in 2014, he was in Giants Gaming as the top laner, and then in 2015, he played on Fnatic. So this is definitely a guy who knows his way around the top lane, has played this game a lot. But he's also going up against, I'm not sure if I know how to say that accent, but a Rome um, from Splice, um, who is also the current active top laner for Splice, which actually beat SK Gaming um, in the overall playoffs. I think the Splice team came fifth? or something like that, and SK came six. So you've got a really, really interesting top lane there with a lot of experience on the professional scene. So this is definitely not a pushover game by any stretch of the imagination. We've got some real talent here. So in the early laning phase, not going to really see that much. Really interesting thing, though, is that this Rakan has gone for that Spell Thief's Edge, not opted for the coin. I am going to try to bounce back between what's happening in the game. We are going to have a focus on this bot lane to see what happens. Just like right now, where we do have a really good engage on that Soraka. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough, but Kaisa is not going to be able to proc that passive onto our Rakan. So he's going to stay decently healthy, but losing about half of his HP. But it is interesting seeing the Spell Thief's Edge on a Rakan. Normally, you do tend to see that Ancient Coin build, um, but he's opted for that Spell Thief. So, is really going to be looking for that poke with his abilities, getting some auto attacks down to generate his gold and income. <clears throat> 
and it's funny just kind of mentioning the gold and income i would have expected going coin would give you more gold but when you look at this performance summary here this recon player is actually ahead in terms of gold per minute over other master tier recons and is way higher in terms of kills and assists as a recon player so we do have this elise here for again the ignite going to go down from the recon a lot of damage going down from the uh elise as well but she's going to use that repel is going to have to come down at some point the heal is going to come down from the kaiser looks at the first blood was actually granted to the silas on the lee sin the gank did not work in the bot lane but it looks like the sivir is going to live through that ignite and get away from that one <coughs> just barely though and it looks like the Elise just barely got away from that one as well. So definitely an interesting gank. Um, I don't think the bot lane on the red side was quite ready for that one. It was the Elise alone for quite some time during that fight. Um, the Rakan did burn his Ignite though. But the Soraka burned her Flash and Ignite in order to heal the Elise back up. And the Kai'Sa also burned her heal during that fight. So you definitely have an, an interesting turn of events in that bot lane. But let's see what's going on in the top lane here. Silas did get that first blood against that Lee Sin. And the Hecarim did go back, just picked up a Doran's Blade. Silas currently already sitting with that Hextech Revolver, which is going to be some some pretty big issues for this Hecarim, I believe, because those um, auto attacks coming with that Hextech Revolver add that little bit of additional magic damage. So, like he wasn't hurting enough already, the Silas now has blue buff um, and is already forcing the Hecarim to go B once again. He already used his TP to get back to the lane, but unfortunately he's going to have to go B once more. Um, it looks like the Echo did just place a ward in that brush. Um, I'm not going down to the bot lane because currently the bot lane has absolutely no competition. So right now, they're just currently freezing this bot lane, which is just the smart thing to do to try to deny as much CS as possible. But once again, we have another fight here. The Elise was actually very low. Surprisingly, they actually wanted to fight that one. And the Elise just goes out immediately, but Whirly B comes back in. And it looks like the uh, Silas is going to get a kill onto Whirly B's Hecarim. Unfortunately, he was just a little bit low. And right now, the Silas is just doing so much damage. Also having that Lee Sin ultimate to utilize there. The Echo having to use his ultimate to get away but it looks like we do now have some action down in the bot lane but no nothing is going to come from that one just a quick little entrance in there the grand entrance uh, Ry uh Rakan's w to get that little bit of a knock up a little bit of damage from that spell thieves edge as well to get some gold but that's about all she wrote um it, it, it's just kind of interesting um, how the this laning phase is kind of going, especially up in the top lane where this Hecarim is just getting absolutely bullied by this Silas. And you normally see Hecarim as being kind of a lane bully in himself, but um, the Ari seems to be doing pretty well in terms of the overall farm right now. We do have a lead in the top lane, 37 to 24 in favor of the Silas. Very dead even in the jungle, maybe one creep on the Lee Sin. Pretty even in the mid lane, 55 to 51, and then an advantage to the Sivir for right now, 53 to 49 in favor of that Sivir. But it looks like the Lee Sin is going to find this Elise in the jungle. It looks like the Resonating Strike is not going to land. And the Echo is here, but surprisingly, the Ari is still available to help out. <coughs> the Rakan is currently just kind of like waiting in the wings here. There's not really much action going on, but I don't think the Rakan really had enough to go back on to get anything of substance. And he's pretty much full HP, full mana. Um, so just trying to get a couple of those Qs off to maybe get a little bit of extra gold. The Kai'Sa is now going to try to run away, assuming that the Sivir is probably coming back. Rakan is just going to get a little bit of additional gold. Right now in the inventory of our Rakan, we do just have that Frost Fang, which was upgraded the last B. Getting those Biscuits down there so he can probably stay in lane for quite some time. And it looks like the Sivir went back and bought a very early Executioner's Calling. And I absolutely love seeing this on ADCs when you're in a lane against a Soraka. The healing from Soraka, even in the early phases is make or break in your lane, especially when you're playing with an aggressive support like a Rakan, when you want to go in, you've got the Ignite, you've got Frost Fang, you want to go in there and get your damage down, you need that healing reduction or that Soraka is just going to take you for a ride and you're never going to get her down or you're never going to get the Kai's down because she's going to get consistent healing. So um, he did go back right now and he finished off a Ruby Crystal and also bought an additional control ward for that lane. So it's going to be interesting to see where he places that one. We'll definitely try to make sure we know where this bot lane is placing their wards because I think it's going to be very interesting if you're trying to learn Rakan and you want to learn from the best this is probably the best place to look to try to see where he's doing things um the Soraka is currently doing the standard mastery taunt I'm assuming to try to bait this Sivir and Rakan into going in on the Soraka, but little do they know, the Elise is currently sitting in this brush. They are pinging that brush, though, which is very, very interesting. They Their game sense is tingling, and I think they kind of know that this Elise is somewhere. They haven't seen the Elise in a long time, and the Soraka was taunting, so I think they might have kind of figured out what's going on here. So the Elise is going to back off. Um, the Kaisa is also going to use this opportunity to go B. Also has that IG skin, which is absolutely epic. Um... 
but it looks like the control word has not yet been placed. They are just waiting on that one, but it looks like the bot lane is just kind of going to reset. Currently 72 to 73, very even in this lane. Currently the biggest advantage that we can see is actually up in this top lane where the Silas 65 to 44 is just kind of dominating um, the Hecarim right now. So kind of interesting these to see, but I'm very excited because level six has now been reached by our laners. So now all of a sudden we do have that quickness ability, the ultimate for Rakan, which allows him to run in and charm people up in a line basically all around him like a game of snake um Rakan is just gonna try to push that elise off that scuttle but unfortunately to no avail um kind of a curious place for this Rakan to be he's gonna have to watch out here because if the cocoon lands but it's not going to be because he gets that distance with that grand entrance um the one thing is that the Rakan did actually get um nerfed slightly once he activates the um quickness you would normally be able to activate the quickness right sorry the quickness and then immediately grant entrance in to get that knock up plus charm but um that did get nerfed for the first 0.5 seconds you are going to be hindered from that the quickness is going to come out but the recon is going to be stunned up Lee Sin is going to get a shield down but the elise is currently going for that Ari just gunning for that kill but the Lee Sin is going to be there to actually secure that kill and the recon got stunned up and i thought that might have been the death of our boy there but unfortunately for the enemy team the elise just went a little bit too ham and didn't have the follow-up from the echo because the echo was already quite low so it looks like the elise is going to go down and the blue side is going to get their second kill of the game currently sitting at two to two 15 point 5k to 15k even at 10 minutes into this game the Rakan is now going to come back into this lane. Control ward still in the inventory. We do currently have a control ward in the Shry Brush and also a control ward in that bottom river. So, um, interesting stuff. Normal wards down here in these... Uh, there's so many wards in these uh, lane brushes just to kind of keep control as to where the Soraka is going to be trying to um, suppress this enemy team and get gold through that Q that Soraka has. But looks like the uh, blue side is just going to back off for right now. They can't really push up too far. So, they're just going to go and take down the Krugs to get themselves some additional gold. But looks like up in the top lane, the Elise is walking away from this one with a kill on the Lee Sin. And right now, Hecarim is just struggling in that lane. Currently, um, Splice's top laner is really showing what it takes to be a professional top laner because he's just putting on a clinic against this... Um Yes, Hecarim. Um, but it looks like the Elise, sorry, the Elise is currently mid lane. A lot of damage going down onto the Ari. The Rakan is currently moving up. The Elise is looking for that cocoon to maybe try to dive and get a reset there. But the silence is going to come down. A lot of damage coming down from the Soraka, getting that slowdown as well. Going to just be onslaughted by auto attacks from that Soraka. But Rakan is going to just walk away from this one like it was nothing. The Echo does still have his ultimate, so I'm not sure the Ari is going to really look for any type of an engage here. But the Rakan is currently looking, trying to be of some assistance. And it looks like the Echo ult is going to come out to save him. Everybody was there, and it was just a really, really nice Echo ultimate to get out of that one. The Rakan is just still kind of like walking around trying to see if he can maybe make something happen. But it does look like Whirly Beast Hecarim is coming in. The Echo does not have an ultimate anymore, but the dash is probably going to be enough to get away from that one. Just going to do some damage. A little bit of a horsey love tap, and then just head on out of that one. So in terms of the ward... War. I think that's what I'm going to call it, the Ward War. Um, not even going to talk about that yet, because the Elise is doing a lot of damage to this Lee Sin, and it looks like the Kais is going to have enough damage with that W to get the kill there, and it looks like the Grand Entrance from the Rakan had to come out just to get him to safety on that one. Lee Sin having a bit of a rough go this game, and right now the Red Side is going to secure themselves that Scuttle Crab, and it could very well mean the Dragon for the Red Team. Which, to be honest, an early game Mountain Dragon is something fantastic to have. Means that your Baron pressure is going to be so much better. Your turret pushing power is going to be incredible. So, getting that thing early is a pretty meaty dragon to lose this early on into the game. But, in terms of the items that our Rakan went back to pick up, did actually finish off the Remnant of the Watcher. So, I don't normally see people finish off their support item that quickly. But, he apparently really did want it. Of course, with those items though, a lot of health, additional ability power, base mana regen, cooldown reduction, and additional gold so um, finishing that off early will mean that he will be getting quite a bit more gold so Maybe that's exactly why his gold per minute is slightly higher than most other Rakan players. But here we go. The quickness has been activated. A lot of damage going down on Soraka, and the Ignite is down as well. The Rakan is going to pick up the kill onto the Soraka. Probably wish that it went over to the Sivir, but that's exactly what you get with a really solid engage on the Soraka and an Ignite. And Executioner's Calling, pretty tough for a squishy Unicorn Healer to survive that one. Soraka didn't even get the chance to use her Flash or her Ignite either. Word. And it was also the Kaisa using her heal to try to keep the Soraka alive, but to absolutely no avail she still died so we are seeing the damage that this lane can pop out the Sivir does have that bf sword and that warhammer giving her a little bit of additional damage and cooldown reduction so 
already a little bit of a lead in favor of this bot side. Only about 4 CS over this Kai'Sa, but we do always have to worry about Kai'Sa and how much damage she can put out. Um, but Sivir, once again, just has that amazing ability to wave clear and just dominate a lane. Um, especially in the later portions of the game, using that ultimate with the Rakan's quickness going should mean that some amazing things can happen. Especially also with the um, Hecarim, who actually did just die. Lee Sin is going to try to take down this Lee and is going to be successful at that. The shutdown of the Silas, I believe, went over to that Hecarim. So that's going to get this Hecarim right back into the game. But the um, ability for the Sivir to utilize her ultimate also in regards to the Hecarim being able to run into team fights is pretty incredible. So I'm excited to see what the overall team fights are going to be like. But an interesting little note that we do have here in regards to team fighting for this Rakan. His team fight win percentage is 74.2%, which is absolutely crazy. And even more so, his team fight participation is 89.1%. So as we can kind of see as he's slowly been kind of coming into this game, he has been roaming around a lot into that mid lane, and he's kind of been part of those fights um, when they're located around mid slash um, bot lane jungle areas. Um, so very interesting that he seems to really enjoy participating in team fights, and he seems to have the game knowledge to put himself in position to fight in those team fights when they do arise. He did go back, he picked up his Merc Treads, so excited to see that. Um, another stat that I'd love to talk about is in just in regards to the fact that he's bought so many wards already, but in terms of his overall ward stats, he's got a 33 wards per game record, which is above most Rakan players by about three. But the grand entrance is going to land with the quickness onto that Elise, and once again, there's absolutely Absolutely no ability with the amount of CC that this Rakan brings to the table. Did the Elise get any chance to repel or flash away from that? It's just an immediate W into an immediate quickness, locks them down, and then the damage can carry them forward through the kill. But it looks like Silas did pick up another kill onto that Hecarim, which is going to put him even further ahead, securing himself his third kill of the game, already having that proto belt completed. Rakan is now kind of moving into this mid lane, and the first turret of the game is going to be going in favor of the red side. Silas picking that one up. Rakan is just kind of looking for an engage here. Going to just get over there. A great grand entrance is going to force the ultimate from the Echo. That's incredible. So, uh, just a nice little shield over to the RE. Grand entrance in onto the Echo. Forces his ultimate, and all he has to do is shield right back out onto the RE. So, once again, this champion just has so many ways of utilizing his mechanics and his mobility that in the right hands, this is such an incredible champion to play. In my hands, it's a piece of hot garbage to play. But in Petit Banan's hands, it's incredible. So baiting out an Echo Ultimate just for a W from the Rakan is pretty damn amazing. So he did go B, picked up another two control wards, an additional no Magic Mantle, and then also a Cloth Armor trying to keep himself alive just a little bit here. Um, we are seeing the Silas is here, but the Rakan is here as well. Gonna land that Grand Entrance. Silas is gonna go down immediately. Once again, just enough CC without even having the quickness available. Still gets enough CC with the Grand Entrance, but Rakan is gonna have to flash away from that when the Cocoon landing from the Elise is gonna do a lot of damage, but nice little quick reactionary flash from the Rakan is gonna keep him safe. And we have the Ari continuing to farm in this mid lane. In terms of the farm, we're about 16 and a half minutes into this game. Should talk about that. 101 to 136 in favor of the Silas. 93 to 93, dead even in the jungle. 160 to 153 in favor of the Ari. The quickness, though, has been activated by the Rakan. It's not going to be able to get into this one. Just a nice cocoon. But in terms of the bot lane, 168 to 167. It's an incredibly even game. Um, and when you think about it, it's 17 minutes at this high of ELO play. But we did have that lane swap. The Rakan and Sivir are now up in the top lane because they already took that bottom lane turret. They are going to get the top lane turret, so they are the first team to two turrets. The Elise is here, but the Lee Sin is also here. The Soraka, though, is currently clearing out ward. So right now, they do have that three to two advantage if they choose to take a fight here, but it doesn't look like they're going to want to. The Hecarim is coming down for a gang onto this Echo. Going to get that dash off to try to keep him alive, but he is going to get CC'd up by that ultimate. The Lee Sin is now here, but the ultimate is still available from the Echo. He is going to ulti away and try to run away from this one. Kai says, W is going to miss. The grand entrance coming in is going to force the flash from the Echo. So once again, just the W coming out from the Rakan, that immediate CC is enough to get an Echo flash. So once again, great little play from the Rakan jumping into that team fight exactly when he needed to. But we are seeing every single chance that this Rakan gets, he's utilizing his sweeper to clear out as many wards as possible. And we're seeing when the Rakan was up there, an insane amount of ward coverage coming from this Rakan, just getting everything down. Another ward was placed over the Dragon Pit to try to see if he could maybe get a steal there, but unfortunately it was not going to be the case. Silas is now down here, is going to find this Hecarim. I don't know if they're going to want to fight here, but it looks like Rakan is just going to go B. The Rakan is going to, sorry, sorry, the Rakan's going to go B. The Lee Sin is going to try to fight this Silas for a little bit. He does have the Lee Sin's ultimate. <clears throat> 
Sivir is now running down, but is also going to be matched with this Kai'Sa. But the fight isn't going to happen. Are we going to see something happen here? It doesn't look like it. So everybody's just going to back off and go back to their respective lanes. Rakan did go back and finish off that Glacial Shroud. So um, going to be providing him just with a lot of additional mana and armor and cooldown reduction. He's already sitting at, I believe, what is it? Can we see his cooldown reduction here? 30% CDR already. So that's pretty impressive. 18 and a half minutes in this game sitting at 30%. He does have that Cosmic Insight, but um, he's going to want more than that. The ultimate is going to come up from the Rakan, but it's not even going to be needed the team managed to clear that one up before he even got there so really nice job by this team 10 to 6 currently 19 minutes into this game the gold difference has now swayed in favor of this blue side 34.2k to 32.1k the echo is going to engage onto the sorry though is going to get a very swift kill it was a four person sub by this echo Wakanda's trying to keep everybody alive getting a lot of shields out going to just use the grand entrance to try to get some distance away from the silas the Sivir doing a lot of damage but is going to almost be taken down hecarim is currently running ramp and taking down the echo as well silas is the next target he's going to jump immediately onto the Sivir. we trying to keep everybody alive but doesn't really have the health to re-engage with his shield so i think that might be the very end of this fight looks like it was overall a two for one exchange in favor of that uh, that red side. I'm um, only really taking down the echo on that one. That was an absolute huge stun coming from that echo. I love seeing things like that. That was a four person stun immediately blowing up that Ari as well and just being able to run away from that one. He did it did cost him his life, but still bringing the gold lead just into on, just under oh, sorry just over a thousand gold um in favor of the spoo side. But right now the red side kind of needs every advantage they can get because they are down in turrets and they are down in gold. So they need to push these turrets. They need to get wards on objectives and then. And they need to try to continue to win these team fights. Oops, I did pause it. But right now, the current Rakan score 2 0 and 3, and he's got a bounty on his head, people. Um, he did just go back, finish off another cloth armor, try to keep himself just a little bit more healthy using that sweeper clearing out those lane wards to make sure that they can't see when the minions are gone where the enemy team is trying to position themselves and he's just going around clearing wards like nobody's business he does have an additional two control wards in his inventory as he's clearing these things out so once again i bring it up he averages 33 wards per game which is very very impressive it's a really good ward score and it's a good habit to get into if you did want to play um somebody like rakan or just any general support um at a high eel low. Uh, but the Elise is right here. Mike gonna get, it's gonna get engaged. A huge amount of damage and a great grand entrance and quickness by the Rakan. Immediate charm after the ultimate onto that Elise and then the quickness and grand entrance just locking down that Soraka, making sure that she could not get away from this one. And right now the blue side does have their eyes on Baron. But we do also have a top lane fight. The Hecarim currently fighting the Silas and we are seeing that the favors have now turned a little bit in favor of that Hecarim doing a lot of damage to that Silas. The Rakan is currently just jumping in and out of this uh, Baron pit to try to just get this Echo away. Echo does do a lot of damage you don't want any challenge on this baron but the smite is down for this red side 4,000 damage onto this baron are they going to have enough to take this one down they are going to disengage so that way the echo cannot stun everybody during this but the echo is going to go in with the w from the kaisa but it is not going to be enough that w landing at a pretty good time but the least in with the smite is going to be able to secure the first baron of this game in favor of the blue side so we're just seeing the Rakan's ability to just pull the trigger on these engages has just been incredible. And I love seeing it. We've got a lot of chain CC from this blue side. And the Rakan has just led the charge in a lot of these fights. Um, but he has gone back now. Um, just gotten a couple quick things. He did go for the Z's Convergence, so a very smart build, and also two Fairy Charms to get additional uh, mana regen, and also another couple Control Wards. Love seeing that. Really wants to have the vision for his team there, but the Z's Convergence is such an important item on somebody like a Rakan, because of course, when you ultimate, you're going to be in the midst of basically everybody on the enemy team, or at least that's what you hope to do, and when of course you activate the Z's Convergence, casting your ultimate near your allies surrounds you with Frost Storm and ignites your allies' basic attack for 10 seconds enemies inside your frost storm are slowed by 20 percent and your allies attacks burn their target for 30 percent additional bonus damage so it's one of those things that Rakan doesn't really want to leave the Sivir side, but here we go. The ultimate is going to be used. The grand entrance is going to go, but it's going to bait out the ultimate from the Echo. The quickness was not enough to get any lockdown here after the Echo had already used his ulti, but that's exactly what we're trying to see here is that the Rakan doesn't want to be too far away from the Sivir, although he's currently very far away from the Sivir. Going to grand entrance away from that one. Just shield over to the Lee Sin using that mobility. Is going to get caught up by the Salazo, but the Salazo is going to take a lot of damage. Having to use that Junior's Hourglass, the Echo is going to engage on the Rakan. He's going to be forced to flash out from that one. The quickness is not available for the Rakan, but right now the Sivir is doing a lot of damage to that enemy team i think they're just gonna have to back off of this one but the ocean dragon is currently available and they are gonna look for it the red team is gonna back off for right now 
And it looks like the blue side might secure their first dragon of the game, which is going to be this ocean dragon. Very nice team fight um, for that uh, blue side. Even though there were no kills, it was just a matter of control and amount of overall damage that that Sivir was able to pump out. And the disengages from that Rakan, you could constantly see that the Rakan would get engaged on and just quickly E back and shield to a target or flash away. So they just kept on losing their engage tools just on this Rakan who kept on using his slippery mobility to get himself into safety. The Echo is going to get another really good um, W off, but it's not going to land on anybody. It's going to land on the Ari actually in the midst of her spear dash. Rakan is going to get CC'd up by, I believe, the um, the Cocoon from the Elise, but nice try. I'm landing onto the Rakan. The, sorry, not onto the Rakan, the Silas. The Silas does have the Ari ult that spirit rush is going to get him a little bit of distance and some damage. <clears throat> Whirly B during all this is currently just split pushing. They don't even really need him for this fight. Ari's just doing a great amount of damage with that poke. Echo is really doing his best to try to find a good engage. Same with this Elise trying to land those cocoons where she can. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having a bit of a cold and my throat is a little bit sore and I'm talking quite fast. But the Kaisa is going to go B. Nothing really completed there, but does now have that Infinity Edge and also the Gwinsu's Rage Blade. So we're going to be doing quite a bit of damage here. They are just looking for that engage. The Rakan Quickness is going to come out. The Grand Entrance is going to miss, and he's going to have to run back to his team, but worthwhile to try to get that try in. But while this is all happening, this turret is going to go down. It's just a matter of constantly pushing this red team off and stopping their engage, because they do have such an engage-heavy team. The Silas is going to pop that Rakan ultimate. It's going to land on four people. That was a great ultimate for him to steal. The ult sorry, the Zoni's Hourglass is going to be coming out from that elite. The Dragon's Rage is going to kick her back, but it looks like the Kai'Sa is going to die to Lisa. Echo Ultimate coming down, and the Ignite from the Rakan is going to tick him down. Ari's going to use her Spirit Rush again during this fight. Absolutely unbelievable. Huge Hecarim Ultimate is going to knock down three of them, fearing three people, getting two kills on the Elise and also onto the Soraka. He's looking for his Quadra. Is the Rakan going to survive this one? He is the triple kill, sorry, for the Hecarim and Rakan surviving by the skin of his teeth at like 200 HP. It's probably about 100 when this whole thing happened. Still unkillable for the support 2, 0, and 9. And it's also the, the um, ADC 0, 1, and 11. I'm not entirely sure if this blue side is going to be able to end this game because the Echo is currently up and everybody is currently very, very low on HP and mana. So 17 to 9, 25 and a half minutes into this game. The current gold lead in favor of the blue side, 48.4K to 41.9K. Seven turrets to three. And the blue side has now cracked the base of the red team getting that first inhibitor of the game in the mid lane and we're just seeing this red side had such an engage heavy team with the echo and the elise and the silas but the the blue side has done such a good job at kind of disengaging and re-engaging at great times and the side sorry the rakan is one of the people that i've got to give praise to for that um going in when he can to get that grand entrance and the quickness off but knowing exactly when to either flash away or to use his e and get the heck out of there to safety and then re-engage when his grand entrance is back up so some really interesting stuff but i got to give props also to this Silas, who during that fight picked up that Rakan ultimate and used the quickness on four members, I believe, of that blue side, nearly swaying that fight in red team's favor. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. So he did go back. He just finished off, uh, just built those uh, two um, chains into the Forbidden Idol and currently does have another two control wards in his inventory. So building so many wards, or sorry, buying so many wards this game. But it looks like the blue side is now just positing for a game win here. The Elise is going to get Grand Entrance. Great timing from that Zonia's Hourglass for that Rakan to just land that Grand Entrance with no problem whatsoever. The Echo Alt, sorry, the Echo W is going to come down, but nobody's going to be stupid enough to stand in it for right now. The Sivir is going to go down by herself to actually clear this wave out. So it's currently a 4v4 if the red side did decide to engage on this one while the Sivir was away, but it looks like the Sivir just clearing that out very, very quickly is going to run away from this one. The Hecarim Ultimate going to be coming out from the Silas, and a nice dash is going to get him away from that Lee Sin resonating strike, but right now the uh, blue side is just looking towards that bottom lane turret. Another control we're coming down just to ensure that this area is controlled. The Quickness is going to come down, land onto the Silas. The Charm going to come down as well, an insane amount of chain CC. Will he be picking up the kill on that one? Regan is going to get away from that one, and it looks like the Soraka is the next target just getting dashed into from the E. The Kaisa is doing a lot of damage using her ultimate to get that shield, killing the Sivir. The Dragon's Rage is going to kick the Echo into the Kaisa, and the ultimate coming down from the Echo. I'm not going to land onto the Kaisa, and Kaisa is going to try to kite away from this one, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. And Hecarim is going to pick up another kill, currently sitting at 9, 3, and 4. For somebody who had an incredibly rough start to this game, this Hecarim has more than picked it up. And right now, the Rakan sitting at 2, 0, and 13, and also Sivir picking up her first kill of the game. 
And the Rakan was trying to get another pick onto this Echo, but unfortunately he's not going to get it. But it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, this game is going to be over in favor of the blue side. And Petit Banan on this Rakan. The end game score sitting at 22 and 10 after 28 and a half minutes. 54.2k to 45.5k. So incredible Rakan play coming out of this player. Just amazing amount of ward coverage, amazing amount of teamfight potential, and timing with his grand entrances, quickness, and his shields. But, you know, we definitely do have to go to the end game screen to see just how well this Rakan played and how the overall team performed. This was an incredible game, and luckily enough, our Rakan made it out with a perfect score of 2 kills, 0 deaths, and 13 assists. Of course, he didn't provide that much damage, but surprisingly, he took the least amount of damage on the team, meaning he had really timely engagements with clutch escapes, and he managed to place 31 wards this game, which was 4 more than the enemy team Soraka. Hopefully, you all enjoyed today's feature on the number 1 Rakan in the world. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what champions you would like to see featured on this this series next. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.